You want to drive a hybrid that doesn't make you look like Professor Offended? Or how dare you mommy blogger? Here you go. Dark road, I'll drive a vault. Do whatever it says it says. Till it breaks itself. 2013 Chevy Volt. The Chevy Volt is faster than a Prius, more spacious, and has a longer electric range. The Volt's party trick is that its approximate 40 mile electric range will always happen with electricity only. If the batteries are full, the Volt will travel 40 miles, give or take, right? before the gasoline engine turns on. No matter how fast you drive, or if you run the air conditioner, the gasoline engine won't turn on until the Volt's batteries are down to 10%. Ford Super Duty. Triple A. Uh, oh. Holy shit. What? This is the first time my car has ever broken down. What happened? This is what I'm getting. Uh-oh. The Volt just bricked itself. And right after Max, the owner, was talking about how the Volt has been the most reliable used car he ever bought. Now, well, pride cometh before a blue screen. All right. The Volt threw this GM trouble code, which uh, is a brake loss and stabilitrack problem. I mean, fine. And drive without traction control. But... It's frustrating because the thing is, the Volt froze itself in park. We couldn't move it or push it. It was stuck. Good thing this happened in a parking lot. Imagine if this happened on the side of a road somewhere or in a dicey city neighborhood or at work on a Friday and this error is cutting into your weekend. So a roadside tech showed up, hooked up an everyday, just an everyday regular jump pack to the Volt's underhood jump point and the car booted up normally. And, uh... Max was able to drive it around, and the tech erased the code and said, no, drive it around and see if it comes back. And for the rest of the shoot, the error didn't come back. So, anyway, the Chevy Volt drives like a minivan. It has this Lincoln Town car over-boosted power steering, electric of course, and the regener regenerative brakes are super touchy, to the point where I, I wanted to drive this car barefoot so I can just big toe the brake pedal and get this thing to stop smoothly. Acceleration under electricity is Tesla-esque. It's nowhere near the Model S's super shove scare me. Okay, dig this. If a Tesla is your shirtless Labatt ice drinking uncle throwing you into the deep end, then the Chevy Volt is your mom pushing you with medium firmness on the swing after you cheerfully shout, no, 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 push me hard this time. The gasoline engine is a naturally aspirated 1.4 liter GM EcoFlex LUU four cylinder making 84 horsepower. And the electric motor makes 149 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. Oh yeah. There are times when the gasoline engine will start on its own, seemingly for no reason. That's when the ECU detects you've been running on electricity for so long, you know, plugging it in every night, that there's a chance the gasoline in the fuel lines is getting skunky. So to minimize the chance of the gas getting all varnishy and gumming up the fuel lines, the engine turns on to cycle that gas out of there and burn it off. And while we're on the topic of gasoline, look at this. Look at this. Look at this exhaust pipe. Look at you hiding it under the bumper. What are you, ashamed that there's petrol going through this, right? Oh, it, it, I mean, rem remember the, the Honda Insight? That had no qualms about having a, a gasoline engine. Yeah, exhaust pipe out the back, just like rare. This way, uh, hide it underneath. The, 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 the tip doesn't even go past the bumper. Look at this marketing. Ugh. I mean, I, I get it. If, if the gasoline, if the exhaust pipe just came out underneath, you would have people go, I thought this was an electric car. Ugh, your Chevy Volt? I, I gotta write more jokes about you, but your Matchbox 20 in 2004, I have no complaints. I guess no middle seat in the back, but someone's riding that hump. Completely pleasant. What do you want from me? Full disclosure. For as mainstream of a band as they were, I never really listened to much U2. 
Sure, Bono is a rock star, but it's kind of hard to imagine him doing rock star things. I can't imagine Bono getting ripped and drinking his bandmates under the table, and I can't really imagine Bono thrashing his ass off stage. And I sure as hell can't imagine Bono having sex with groupies. If anything, you would think he'd try to organize some sort of benefit concert for whoever tried to bang him. I mean, would you want to bang a guy whose entire brand is AIDS, 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 dysentery, AIDS, 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 famine. And AIDS, 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 rockin' good stuff. The Volt is a follow-up to the EV1 electric vehicle General Motors made from 1996 to 1999. And the idea here was to craft an electric vehicle that would actually turn a profit, since this was at a time when buying armloads of Boskov stock was probably a wiser investment than throwing your money behind a hybrid concept car. The auto industry ended up fighting the California Air Resource Board regulations, which led to a reduction of the zero emission vehicles ruling, which allowed auto companies to produce gas-powered vehicles and hybrids in place of straight-up electric vehicles so long as emissions remain low. Strangely enough, when the EV1 program was killed off in 2002, the original EV1 cars were all repossessed. And GM refuses to allow leases to purchase the cars outright by claiming they were claiming there was issues with the parts. While some of these original EV1s were given to museums, the majority were destroyed or stripped for materials, making an EV1 about as rare as James Dean's Little Bastard. Among 90s cars, you'd probably have an easier time finding a Kia Claris than an EV1. The Volt came along in a time when hybrids were gaining more mainstream acceptance, rather than simply being this random car that instantly gets you labeled as the kind of self set satisfied ass bagel who takes a long deep whiff from a library book you know flipping the pages and <sighs> and then putting the book back on the shelf because social justice warriors don't read oh yeah the gas tank is nine gallons and it takes and it takes 93 octane but the battery never goes under a 10% charge or really over 90% the idea is when if you run out of electric electricity, and you run out of gas, the car uses that little bit of extra reserve battery to get you somewhere where you can fill up on gasoline. It's definitely a helpful feature if you're the type of person who just forgets to fill up sometimes. This happened once to my buddy Ray Gutterberg. He fills up his own Hot Pockets in a trailer he rented off Interstate 476, and he was on his way to meet a guy from Craigslist to trade the food for some weed when his cobalt ran out of gas. The Hot Pockets thought out and it ruined the filling so he had to start making them from scratch all over again with basically no time left before he had to meet this guy. So the valuable lesson I've learned is if you ever wanted to follow in Ray's footsteps, choose a filling you could make without needing half an hour to recharge. The Volt comes with three drive modes. Mountain mode, which recharges the battery when you're going downhill, so that gets a fair share of uses in states like Pennsylvania. Then you have normal mode, which uses the battery first and then the engine second, we've been talking about that. And then sport mode, which supposedly makes the car faster by using more battery power. Max thinks all it really does is make the pedal response different. Of course, while the interior is is clean enough for what the consumer is probably looking for, it comes with a host of smaller issues. Things that are glorified nitpicks that add up over time. For instance, you have to buy the cabin air filter separately for some reason, and the climate control buttons only change temperature one degree at a time. It also has these raised braille type console buttons like they were designed for the blind. It's all a bit clumsy and counterintuitive. The leaf button gives you charging info, such as how long until you're fully charged depending on the power you're using. It also gives you energy info like efficiency details and how much energy you've used since the last charge. And then there's a readout of power flow such as where the power is coming from, you know, that animation. It can be helpful for people looking to maximize mileage, but it really just comes across as the automotive version of counting calories. Every time I drive a Volt, it just turns around and dies. I ask myself why, oh why? But codes were then reset, and then it was okay to drive. But that is all I remember.